Well, tonight we are bringing you inside a shocking presentation that police are giving to parents and kids. It's a lesson about Internet safety that's so graphic it is only given to older students. So startling, some parents are left in tears. Gene Mackin shows us why investigators say it's important to step inside the mind of a predator. This big, heavy sweatshirt. It is the most jarring part of Detective Matt Fleming's lesson. See, it's bulky and it hides my face a little bit. And then I'm going to make sure I have this hat. He transforms from a police officer into a predator, teaching students and parents how one post online can turn a child into prey. I want to go to Tim's room, touch his stuff, smell his bed and his clothes. It is an eye opening moment for parents. It was so scary. You think you know what's going on and, and you don't. This right here kind of puts it in perspective even more so. I think we'll have a conversation with our kids. New Hampshire's Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force wants parents to step in long before a stranger does. It's more than just going on there and monitoring as a parent, it's about going on there and understanding what you post makes a difference. The task force says boys and girls are logged on an average of 11 hours a day on all sorts of devices. And parents need to keep up with the technology to keep children safe. Learn the latest apps, not just Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. Follow the trends like Kick, where you can video chat and have virtual blind dates. Tumblr and spy calculators that use a passcode to open a hidden vault of pictures and videos. Know when your children are online. Internet investigators say the most dangerous time is between 11 p.m. and 2 a.m. when parents are asleep. Detectives say try these rules at home. Turn off the Wi Fi when you go to sleep. Check your phone bill to see when data is streaming. Make a house rule all devices on the kitchen counter at night. And the commander of the task force says yes, parents should snoop. It's part of their responsibility. You know, they, they check to make sure that the, the car is safe when their 16 year old is out driving it. Why not check the phone when your 7, 8, 10 year old is now using phones and other social media? They should know what their children are up to. The experts say gaming systems should be in a common area because children are communicating globally while role playing. The task force says predators troll for children who reveal too much personal information or post revealing photos on social media. Police call those pictures hardcore selfies. They say teach children appropriate online boundaries and that deleting doesn't work. It's wiped off of the screen, but it still exists in the device, and our investigators and our task force will find it. Police say parents should take a page out of their playbook. When children share a concerning photo or post, act like a detective. They're trained not to make a face of shock or disapproval. When your kids decide to open up and tell you a serious situation, you need to stay calm, hear what they have to say, and work through the problem. The minute you shut them down, they're never going to tell you the whole story. The Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force says it takes time and homework, but it's a new part of parenting and necessary because they're raiding homes of accused online predators at an alarming rate. Jumped in our cars and drove to that community and kicked in the door. One per week on average, somewhere in New Hampshire. Our victims are real, they are minors, and they have families. And internet investigators say it's also important for parents to set an example. Don't post anything online you wouldn't want your child to post. Jean Mackin, WMUR News 9.